What's everybody? My name is Chance, and today we're diving into a Selesnya enchantment deck. And boy, when this deck wins, does it win? And what do I mean by that? Is it doesn't just win, you know, here or there, a little edging out, whatever, mono red, slow deal damage. No, no, no. When this deck wins, it's with a big creature slamming in with trample, or it's with a flyer that has way more damage than what you think it should. So we'll get into all that and more when we start breaking down the deck. First and foremost, I would like to remind you if you enjoy the content, leave a like, but most importantly, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can get more of these lovely, lovely videos. Now, on into what we're actually playing today. We have four copies of Auslid of Life's Bounties. This is going to be an enchantment card which works very well off the back of our Satessan Champion. Now, Satessan is a rare, but it's one of the only rares that you actually need in the deck as the main deck revolves around her for its large majority so three mana for this enchant or human warrior based off enchantment i should say a uh, creature that reads whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter kind of nice and draw a card so this creature is going to be getting huge while also allowing you to draw cards and you'll notice Alslid is an enchantment creature. So we're getting a creature down, we're getting an enchantment down, and we're getting a form of protection as we can pay one life, sacrifice it, and then give protection to Satessin, right? Next up, we have Karametra's Blessing, which is again gonna give us that protection on Satessin because like I said, Satessin is your main key piece, so you wanna be keeping her alive. So this is gonna give us uh, the target creature plus two, plus two, as well if it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, so Alslid and Destiny Weaver and that kind of stuff. Then it's also gonna gain Hexproof and indestructible now obviously you're going to try to get some enchantments done on satess and champion so you know you put the math together and that just makes sense sentinel's eyes i don't recommend running any more than one or two copies simply because it has the escape and the escape cost is only one mana as well so it's very very cheap and very very awesome to be able to get back over and over and over again but you don't want to be drawn this turn six when you're really really praying for some protection with satess right Next up, we have Shadow Spear because sometimes you just need to give your Satessan Champion Tramble and Life Link and plus one plus one all in one go. Not to mention the fact that Shadow Spear does stack up well with all that glitters, which is the next card in our list. Hey, four copies of this beautiful enchantment. It reads Enchanted Creature. Creature gets plus one plus one. And well, we all know the rest of this, right? For each artifact or enchantment. And you just sort of stack down enchantments, and Satessin keeps getting counters and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and yada yada yada, right? Destiny Spinner is gonna make it so our creatures and enchantment spells that we cast can't be countered, which is really nice if we're going up against, you know, Demir, Esper, Simic, uh, which aren't too terribly bad in, in the rotated format, but they still do exist. Next up, we have three copies of Heroic Intervention to again give us protection, but this doesn't just protect our creature. No, no, this protects our creatures, our, our Planeswalker, our enchantments, our artifacts, every permanent we have on the board. It doesn't protect our faces, but eh, everything else. Kindred's Transformation is actually some pretty decent, uh, I, I call it removal, but it's kind of not removal. So it, it's, you turn a creature that your opponent controls into a 3-3 it loses all its abilities and all that kind of stuff whatever um you also get to draw a card and it's enchantment i was mostly trying it out instead of glass casket as glass casket is an artifact which works well with all the glitters but it doesn't proc stess and champion so i was trying to like hmm what else can we use so i threw in kenrith's transformation honestly i think something like a wolf willow haven would do better in the deck right a little bit more of a guarantee and Again, when this deck wins, it's winning by a landslide, so removing your opponent's creatures isn't generally that big of a deal, and if it is, you do always have Banishing Light as well as the Calyx, so that's our first, like, change, right, that I would make to the deck. Moving us down, we have three copies of Satessin Training. Uh, the enchanted creature gets to get plus one plus zero on stat lines has trample and you get to draw a card all for two mana and if you're throwing that on satessin obviously you get to draw two cards and all that other stuff bronze hide line two mana for the three three already great stat line not to mention the fact that whenever it dies it returns to the battlefield as an aura enchantment so i believe that procs satessin champion i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure anyways and as an enchantment on your creature you can pay two mana and give it basically the same effect that Bronze Hide Line itself has, which is, you know, gain indestructible until end of turn, which is a nice, really nice effect with all the board wipes that uh, linger about. Uh, three copies of Banishing Light for removal, 
just in general. So Tessin we went over several times. Archon procs off of all of these enchantments, so it would be crazy to not play Archon in this deck, right? Uh, and every time we throw down an enchantment, of course, we're going to be creating one of these two, two flying Pegasus creatures, which while we have Archon down, they also have lifelink. And then finally, we have Calyx Destiny's Hand because returning all of these enchantments to the battlefield is really nice. Having the ability to exile something that your opponent controls behind an enchantment you control is really nice. And, you know, diving in and looking for more enchantments is kind of what you want to do with this deck, right? Um, the lands, you do the best you can. If you have Temple Plenty, it's great. If you have the castle, great. If not, don't worry about it, right? Now, on over here into the, some of the cards that I would recommend, Gilded Goose would help protect your Satessin Champion, right? So that turn three, you'll be able to get down Satessin and still have one extra mana from the Goose to where you could use it on, you know, a Karametras or an Alslet or something like that. Transcendent Envoy, although I'm not a huge fan of it personally, it is a common card. So if you don't have the Bronze Eyes or the Destiny Spinners or... I guess mostly the bronze side because they're the rares, right? Then Transcend, it could be a very good swap out. It is an enchantment creature, so it procs the test and as soon as it enters the battlefield. And it already has flying, which means, you know, you throw in all that glitters on it. And it is sort of free ski to the face for you. Wolf Willow, we had talked about. Heliod is another enchantment. And if you want to, you know, push more towards life gain, I don't blame you. Life gain's fun. Um, and just in general, if you pay two mana and put this on your Statesman Champion, you're gaining tons of life, right? So it could really help you out in those aggro matchups. And I would 10,000% understand, uh, you know, you playing Heliod. And then if you want to have a little bit of fun with the deck, Nine Lives is an enchantment. It does have Hexproof. And in some matchups, it would save you, um, you know, and others, maybe not so much. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for the deck tech break, blah, 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 <laughs> breakdown. Hope you all enjoyed. Uh, be sure, as always, you're watching all the way through the video. You're getting the pro tips where I break down the deck and these kind of decks and how to play them better, right? The daily question where I ask you a riveting question and I want to know your opinion on some, uh, I was about to say serious matters, but, you know, some, some actual deep thinking questions. So we'll say, and we can be truthful about that, right? Um and then you know discord subscribe all that great stuff anyways without further ado let's go ahead and hop right into the matches wreck <laughs> anybody that has yugen as their avatar i'm already not a fan of <laughs> and for the third game in a row we're going second in case anybody's trying to keep track of it oh chance sure does bitch a whole lot about going going second third game in a row We'll, we'll keep up with the numbers. By the way, last night also had a negative uh, going first rate. So we'll we'll see come the end of our days if I'm correct or if I'm just being a little bitch. Bronze Hot is nice. But it doesn't have anything to come back onto quite yet. So we'll just go for the Destiny Spinner. But yeah, y'all help me keep track of like how many times I get to go first versus how many times the opponent goes first. Of course, I guess could be skewed for y'all because like obviously the, the times when the opponent goes first and they just ramp real hard, like those aren't going to be very fun games to watch and I'm not going to sit y'all through that shit. Nobody wants to see a turn five Ugin unless they're the ones playing it, right? Nobody wants to see that. Turn six, same shit. So opponent's going to mono white life gain. Interesting. Probably should grab white mana there. Now I'm thinking about it. Um, we actually don't have anything to protect our destiny spinner. Let's just get the bronze hide line down. If we can have it on something, it can at least give that something indestructible, right? So, got a 3-3, three, three, got a 2-3. We're all right. They do have a Daxos down, which of course is an annoying as hell blocker. But yeah, I think I should have grabbed white mana there. Oh, well. Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis. Oh, hoo, hoo. So if I block here and they use the other self to savior to protect this self to savior, cool, whatever. We still get to return the bronze side though onto our destiny spinner. I'd say that's worth. Worth. Mm-hmm.
Ooh, look at that. Now, I can either go for Sentinel Zaz onto the Destiny Spinner, in which case we can swing in and have it as a defender. Ooh, Setessent Champion. Now that I really want to go for that Sentinel Zaz. All right. Are we waiting on the... Oh, oh they're Selfless Savior, right? I was about to say, are we waiting on the opponent to do something here? Equally so, I could just throw all that Glitters and Sentinel's Eyes onto the Destiny Spinner and kill their Elspeth. I think I like the Sites and Sentinel's Eyes play better. Alright, and another Sentinel's Eyes. Hey, I won't, I won't say no. Boop. Elspeth goes down to one, and we got a decent little board state here now. We do still need the Karametra's Blessing or a, 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 an Alslid is what I was going to say. It's funny that we have like, I think, seven or eight copies of protection in the deck. And we just, we never see the protection when we want it. We see the Alslid when we see the Karametra's, right? It's like, you, you get both at the same time. Or like in that last match, you'll get your Karametra's right after it's important. <laughs> shit, shit always amazes me. Always amazes me the the timing of magic, right? Like the timing's so perfect with everything. You'd think it was a TV show. You'd think it was planned. I want to draw a lot here because I'm looking for something. I'm looking for some protection. <laughs> Alright, so we'll draw two here. Mm, nope. Yes, that works. That works, that works, that works. Alright, now do I want to throw... Shadow Spear down or Sentinel's Eyes? Goes up to a six seven, then it goes up to a seven eight, which looks like it should be big enough to deal with stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna go here, and then we'll have that one man. I can always throw down Shadow Spear later, but this kicks our Satessin up, right? And there's our Banishing Light. Beautiful, beautiful. Do I care about killing Elspeth? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I can always Banishing Light it, but... Honestly, I think I'd rather save Banishing Light. Alrighty. We're in a decent little position here. It's Mono White, so they're top decking for the rest of the game, right? We're sitting pretty. Heliod. Heliod... Not fantastic for us because it is online, but we have the Banishing Light, so we just take it. We just snatch it right back from them. If they're smart, they're going to put those counters on Daxos, but since they're greedy, they're slapping them all on Heliod. Well, I mean, actually, that's not too bad because Heliod is probably their only bet against the Tessin, right? And they know that. They know that. I know that. Luckily, their Selfless Savior doesn't actually give protection or hexproof. It just gives Indestructible. Which, in the grand scheme of things, is cool and nice and all, but does not actually protect them from things such like this. And then, of course, we're going to go all that glitters on Satessin, keep that one mana for the Owlslit to protect Satessin, and, uh, yeah, have a great day. You know? <laughs> have a dandy little time. So whenever you have protection in this deck, it, it feels fantastic. You're drawing cards, you're dealing damage, you're doing everything you want to do, right? When you don't have protection with this deck, it feels terrible, and you're, you're just losing it. You're just losing it. But the nice thing is, the protection in this deck is pretty strong. Like, one, you have protection with Auslid, great. Great source of protection, right? 
And then two, you have Karametra's Blessing, which gives you Hexproof and Indestructible. And then three, you have Heroic Intervention. So, anyways, Wreck is going to get wrecked with... Boy, howdy. All right. M. Kulo, we'll keep this hand. Got to toss the Archon back, because that's ways away, and we only have two lands. Just the two. Go in second, add the Mulligan, just because of lands. Do, 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 do. You know what I don't really like is this weird graphical bug that's going on. It's like black smoke over here for no, for no apparent reason. All right, so we really need some land here so we can get the Satessan Champion down. Satessan Spinner, no problem. Satessan Champion, a little bit more difficult. Hey, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and play this so we can get Satessan Champion down. Actually, I'd kind of rather wait for, well, hell, even at four mana, it doesn't work. We're going to need, we're going to need quite a bit of setup here. We'll see. They're playing all kinds of colors. I don't trust just throwing down Satessan. If I throw down Destiny Spinner and put Sentinel's Eyes on it, it might be a mistake. But it could draw out whatever they might have for us. You know what? Whatever. I didn't come this far to not risk it all. I think we faced M. M Kulo last night, maybe? Or yesterday at some point? I don't know. Anywho, there's Banishing Light. Ooh. Uh, you know, I haven't seen a single one of my Banishing Lights yet. That's well, that's weird. That's mighty strange. Now, we actually can't keep Karametra's Blessing up if I play anything, so I'm just going to skip out on this turn, and next turn we'll play all that glitters, right? Or maybe Satessin Training. We'll see. We can protect our Destiny Spinner. If we had just waited with the Destiny Champion, I guess we could have protected it, but... Good old Chance got greedy. Greedy, greedy, greedy. No, 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 we wouldn't have been able to protect it, right? Because then we would have only had one mana, wouldn't have been able to enchant it. So... Uh, never mind. Never to the mind. All that glitters. And of course, leave the mana for... For Kara Mattress. But we do have another All That Glitters to slap on this Destiny Spinner, which is really good. Really, really good. Alright, Fabled Passage. Well, we may not go for too long today, everybody, just because I streamed last night and today's my last off day. I still have the podcast to edit as well as... Um, as well as uh, tomorrow's video and all that good stuff, you know. What? Whoa! What happened to their dog? Dogs? <laughs> Somebody comment down below and let me know what happened to their. Like, it, it's. Is it there? Is it gone? Is this a bug? <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, I don't know. Any hoosers, I guess we're waiting to see if M. Kulo has an answer this turn. They have Return to Nature and Banishing Light, so my guess is yes, they will have an answer. They didn't. Oh my goodness. Well, let's go for the Satessan Training. They're either going to have the answer or they're not, and I'd rather get the card draw if they're, if they're going to have it. Or if they're not, I mean, right? The card draw and the extra damage, that is. So now we wait. We wait, and we see, and we see, and we wait. Hmm. Well, might as well throw it all down on the Destiny Spinner. 11-11. Make a wish, everybody. Make a wish. If we could get down that Sentinel's Eyes, that would have been great, but I already played a land like a dumbass. Played it without even knowing what my full hand would be. Sublime Epiphany, my favorite card to play, my most hated card to see played. <laughs> and then we 
we get the Karametra's blessing. Oh, irony, you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> you need to protect your creature? Yeah, how about next turn, huh? Does next turn work for you? Okay, okay. Jesus Christ. Always a day late and a dollar short, right? Boom. Yeah, that's right. Your return to nature will not work on me this time. Wahaha. So our opponent's got to be getting close to that Yugen, right? Right. No way they're not playing a Yugen, and they've got to be getting close to one. Do I go diving for an enchantment if it resolves, of course? Or do I take their wall? Or do I take their banishing light? Whoa! Next lever, please! I think I take their banishing light. Yes, yeah, so give me that. Although, if, this could be a terrible idea, right? Because if, if I take it with the Destiny Spinner and then they remove the Destiny Spinner and then they get the Banishing Light back and then with the Banishing Light they can retake Calyx. So maybe I should have just taken the wall. <laughs> mm, I don't know. They exile in Calyx over the Satessin. I mean, Calyx does get to dive into your deck, so it kind of makes sense. Satessin is more reliant upon those top decks. Uh, which you all know us, when it really matters, when it's down in the knit and grit, we don't fucking top deck shit. I'm putting that other Satessin away because I want an enchantment. We need enchantments, otherwise it doesn't fucking matter whether we have the Satessin down or not because they'll remove it before it well, you guessed it, matters. <laughs> Magic is a funny, funny game. Funny, funny game. Cycling the neutralize, that seems weird to me, given you have so much mana, I would keep. What are you looking for, are you in? <laughs> you gonna bust! Bum, 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 bum. Oh, Shark Typhoon. Uh, GG. Citizen. Gonna be our first foe with the Selesnia deck today. Well, I'll see Citess and Champion in hand. I have to keep it, even though we do have the two copies of Fabled Passage. It blows, but it is what it is. Also, you know what I'm just now thinking about in that previous game? Had we went for the turn one serrated scorpion, we might have actually won that game. Which is very frustrating to think about. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and grab some white mana here and then uh, probably get the destiny spinner down. Well, I guess we'll see because we could always kindred its transformation something. It's Golgari Adventures. We played this deck ourselves. And uh, I gotta say, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. What we could do is go for the Shadow Spill Spear Alslid. Come next turn. Or no, no, no. We're, we're definitely playing the Fabled here, so we can guarantee to hit the Satesh's next turn. So we only have one mana here. Um... Go ahead and get down the Shadow Spear, and this way in the future, once our Satessin gets built, all we'll have to do is equip the Shadow Spear, and it'll have the Trample and the Life Gain, which is great, so. Yeah, and our opponent's just playing the Love Shrug, so. We'll be a-okay. We are going to take quite a little bit of a beating here, though. I would like to have the Alslid down for when we have Satessin, 
So maybe we play Alslid here and Destiny Spinner. Next turn we can turn around playing Setessent and Sentinel Size, right? I know we're missing out on the procs on the Setessen Champion, but it'll be all right. If this leads to a better setup, I think I think that's worthwhile, right? Leave my Alslid alone. Questing beast, holy shit. That's scary. Scary, scary, scary. We can block the Love Struck Beast, and we actually, I think we should, realistically, like, taking non damage. Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. Um, next turn, we'll play the Kenra's Transformation onto the Questing Beast. For now, I think we're good to just throw Sentinel's Eyes onto the Auslid. Uh, no attacks. Because once we deal with the Questing Beast having the ability. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, so, Garrick, you know, trample, trample, smash, smash, that kind of shit. Alright, so that's 7 that we can't block, and then 5. That is 12, but they don't have any additional damage outside of that. I could block with Auslet into the Love Struck, but I know I'm going to Kenra's Transformation, the Questing Beast, on the next turn. Nah. I'll go down to one. <laughs> I'll do it. Cool beans. All these lands. All right, so we can pay two and equip this here. That will give him enough to at least deal with the questing beast, right? Or I can just simply put this guy down. Another land, eh? Hmm, that's a little rough. Not gonna lie, that's a little rough. <laughs> We still die here. Yeah. What I should have done is put the Shadow Spear onto the Satessin so we had some form of life gain. 